Hey everyone, this is Mike Kramer of Mock Capital checking in. Today is Tuesday, uh, September 5th, and it's around 7 o'clock New York time. U.S. markets are closed. Uh, so tomorrow we're going to be getting more, uh, another round of economic data. This is going to be for the S&P Global PMI data. It's going to be just the final uh, reading uh, for the numbers we already got, which were the preliminary numbers back around August 23rd. For the final numbers, we're looking for nothing to change, 51 versus the prior 51 for services, composite 50.4 versus 50.4. ISM services index, obviously a, a more important reading given that we haven't seen this number uh, yet. Uh, again, for this month, we're looking for 52.5 down from 52.7. There's no estimates for prices paid employment or new orders, but these are all very important numbers. Last month, prices paid came in at 56.8. If we just look at really quickly at this number, you can see that we've been mostly trending lower with a little bit of an uptick. So obviously, if we get another number that ticks higher, it wouldn't certainly be all that surprising given that you know we're expected to see inflation in August tick higher. Um, you can see that the services data basically just follows the CPI data. So I, I think a, a move higher in the services ISM uh, prices paid index I don't think would be all that surprising considering expectations are for CPI to rise on a year-over-year -year basis for the month of August but again this is something to keep an eye on um, when we sort of look at where the equity markets are at this point the S&P 500 really didn't really do much of anything today and most of the selling came within the last 20 minutes or so we were just really stuck around the 4500 level and if I just show you from a gamma perspective, you know, the big gamma was all concentrated at this 4495, 4500. And when we go into tomorrow, it's not expected to be too much different. Um, we're looking, you know, the big gamma levels for tomorrow look like they're going to be, again, around 4500. Uh, and then even going into uh, Thursday. So, um, again, you can see by Thursday, you start getting a little bit more gamma here down at some lower levels and you have some more uh, put gamma getting built and so this could act as a drag once we get past tomorrow but certainly uh, I would watch tomorrow to see this 4500 level to see if the market can gyrate back towards that level throughout the day uh, I think that might be a little bit challenging given that we had such a weak close again we're one of those scenarios where you know we had a pretty much a back and forth session with a bunch of uh, with really no decisive moving. We gapped lower to start the day. We, we immediately tried to fill the gap. We sold off. We came back. And then we had this big uh, big drop into the close, which ended up resulting in a 40 basis point decline. I mean, for the Bears, I think it's fairly easy tomorrow. You know, if they really want to take control, all you have to do is just gap the index lower right from the start. And you can really start getting momentum, perhaps moving to the downside. It's also important to note that the zero gamma level is around 4490 and so when you once you break below 4490 in the S&P cash index you know gamma is going to shift back to a negative regime that's going to increase volatility market makers are likely to go along with the sellers and uh, this could you know again potentially accelerate a move lower with support at 4460 and then all the way back down to somewhere around this 4420 region because again, we moved up so quickly that once the selling really starts, if we were to break this 4490 level, which again, granted, we closed at 4498, may not be too hard if they can just gap the index lower. Um, that, that could easily start a move down, especially if you were to get a prices paid index that really came in much hotter than what last month was and potentially signaling that, that the August CPI print could be even hotter than what the current expectations are. On the flip side, uh, from the bullish standpoint, again, the big gamma level is around 4,500, and we can see that 4,515 acted as a pretty firm resistance level for the last couple of days. Uh, and so I think the upside is much more limited in this case. I think if they're, you're bullish, you want to see the index quickly overtake this 4,506 level and then try to surpass this 4,515. I think a failure of 4515 probably keeps the index trapped around 4500. If you can surpass the 4515 region, then obviously you start having room to move up towards 4535 or so. But again, given the composition of the the gamma levels, given the composition of the technicals, 
I think it's going to be harder for the Bulls to really get something going uh, tomorrow, given, uh, again, unless we get some sort of meaningful gap above this high uh, to start with. Um, the other thing that's worth pointing out is when we look at the longer term chart, here's our bump and run pattern, and you can see that we came down, broke the trend line, came back up to it, and now we close below it again. So this, this is also something you're going to watch want to watch. Plus, it's worth noting that the 10-day exponential moving average and the 50-day moving average are right around the same spot at this 4470 level. So this is another area, if we begin to sell off tomorrow, that could offer support as well. So again, uh, this is just so this is just another region that could offer support if we were to begin to sell off tomorrow on the open. When we look at the NDX, um, again, very similar situation. Here's your uh, here's your 50-day moving average and your 10-day exponential moving average right there around 15,240. Uh, the, the, the NDX had a very similar trading day to that of the S&P 500, but was actually much stronger than that of the S&P 500. Again, you can see that we basically gapped lower. We were able to fill the gap, and then we had this uh, sell-off into the close. And so again, for the NDX, it looks a little bit easier if you're bullish just because you don't have as much to overcome. So clearly, if you can take out these highs pretty early, um, there's really not much to stop you from taking out this 15,600 region and then potentially working to fill this gap again at 15,750. But again, a lot of this is going to be dependent upon you know where they open this market tomorrow because if they take this out early, that sets up potentially higher prices. Meanwhile, if we go the way the S&P appears to be set up more, uh, if we gap this down and uh, you start moving lower, you know, your support level then comes at 15,435 or so. And then, you know, again, it starts getting a little bit more dicey because you get to 15,370, uh, 15,350. And then again, there's a straight line here where there's really no support in the way. So from that standpoint as well, the NDX might have an easier task if momentum starts to build to the upside. But again, it's really going to depend on how this market can open tomorrow, which means you're going to be seeing a lot of influence in terms of how the foreign markets are trading. When we look at the Dow, it's a very similar situation to what we've been in now for some time. Here's your 10-day. Here's your 50-day. We actually closed below the 10-day um, today. The close was 34641 the 10 day exponential was 34,685. The 50 day was 34,746. So we closed below the 50 day and the 10 day exponential moving average. And that's pretty bearish in, the, in a sense. And really, tomorrow, again, if we were to get a gap lower and gap below this 34,600 area, uh, again, this, was, this has really been the big sticking point for the Dow. It just can't seem to really meaningfully escape from it. You can see it tried to at one point, but then we came right back through it. Now we can clearly see that there's a trend line here. And you have to think that if we break this 34,600 region, we then become at risk of breaking this 34,240 region, which would break the trend line and, and probably signal much further declines to come from there. Um, again, the Dow just continues to not really look well. It seems to look like the weakest out of the uh, out of the three averages, just like the S and P had a big sell off in the final fifteen or twenty minutes. So if you're bullish on the Dow, I think it's fairly easy. Again, it's the same concept we we were just talking about. Here's actually a trend line. So you'd want to probably what we'd want to see tomorrow is a gap above this trend line, and that could set up a potential move higher. But at the same time, the weakness in the Dow just continues. And you really have to watch for a break below 34,600, particularly if you get a gap below that level. I think that would be a particularly bad omen for um, the market overall. And again, it's going to depend a lot in terms of where uh, the European markets are trading because the European markets, for the most part, have been fairly weak as well. Uh, the German DAX, uh, again, moved higher to start today. And then it came down. Uh, again, the DAX has to take out this 15,800 region. But again, when we look at the when we look at the DAX, um, you can see that it is also closing and trading below 
the 50-day and the 10-day exponential moving averages. So again, not really the most bullish setup here. When we look at the DAX, it also looks like it's consolidating at this point in some sort of uh, descending triangle, perhaps, or maybe it's even part of a, a broader, larger diamond pattern. But regardless of what it is, you can see there's clearly this big move higher then this big move down to the lower end and a big move up. And so we have some sort of consolidation forming here. And um, really, uh, where the DAX goes longer term is going to really depend, I think, on where the Asian markets mostly go. And again, if we look at the DAX for tomorrow, you're going to want to take out this level pretty quickly. That sets up a bigger uh, rally. But again, a move lower, I think as soon as you undercut this low of 15,700, you're looking at this giant gap down here at 15,635 that needs to be filled. Uh, and, and again, given that we have this, what looks like a descending triangle at a minimum forming, that would be more of a bearish pattern and suggest we at least retest these lows down here at 15,493. When we look at the, uh, the FTSE 100, again, this is another index really not doing much of anything, uh, has really stalled out after a really big move over the last couple of months here. We had this really big rally from October, uh, into February. And since then, we've just been making a, a series of lower highs. It, it's tough to say that we're really making lower lows. We're certainly not making meaningfully lower lows. Um, and so this, again, looks to me like we're just trending slowly down. Uh, for the FTSE really to get any sort of momentum going again, you need to clear this the 7,520 level, which would set up a retest, a 7,650 level. Likewise, again, we're still facing the same scenario. A break of 7,250 sets up a, a move down below 7,000, somewhere to around 6,890. So I, I think at this point, the, the FTSE looks like it's incomplete in whatever it is it's trying to do. Interestingly, I'm just noticing this is almost uh, a trend line that goes across all these tops and across all these bottoms. And so again, it just seems like we're consolidating at this point to um to lower levels on the FTSE. So again, weak start to Europe may spill over into a weak start here in the US. If you can get over some key resistance levels in Europe, maybe that results in a a move higher in the US early on. But overall these indexes look like they're pretty much stuck in the mud with maybe the Nasdaq looking the best positioned out of all of them at this point and probably the Dow looking the worst positioned out of all of them. So anyway, um, that's all I have for you. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you soon. Bye.